Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another one of my live videos. Um, today we're talking about sacrifice, the key to success. So I do a video like this every single Monday at 12 p.m. So if you want to tune in again at 12 next Monday. So welcome everybody. I'm Fani Nodia. I'm the managing director for Bosnet Direct, where we help accountants to scale the practice to seven figures. So let us jump right in and get started with today's training or today's video. So I want to talk about sacrifice. Now, not, not sacrifice in the old sense of sacrificing animals or people, or anything like that. No, I want to talk about the modern definition of sacrifice. So think about it this way. Think about what did you have to give up to get where you are now? Did you give up a job? If you started to practice, did you give up your job? If you chose a certain university, what other universities did you give up? If you choose a certain high school, what other schools did you give up? Every single decision you make in your life, there's stuff that you need to give up in order to make that decision, in order to make something happen. So let's take, for example, um, your social life. If you're working too hard, you're giving up your social life. If you're working too hard or... You know, you want to make a success of something you could have very few friends or something like that. You're constantly giving stuff up. You're constantly sacrificing certain things to become better at other things. So this is what we're talking about today. So you can even ask, what did your parents give up for you to be here? Just for you existing. What did they have to give up? Did they have to um, take a normal job or can't didn't start their own business because they had to pay for you to your tuition or something like that the entire world and business itself constantly have this main thing about sacrifice you constantly need to sacrifice something to get something in return so a point i want to make here it is unbelievably hard to become good at everything but it's surprisingly easy to become the best at something specific. So if you think about this, it's very, very difficult to do everything well. But if you start focusing all your attention on only one thing, you will very easily become the best or an expert or specialist in that one thing. So take, let's, let's look at a few examples, right? Think of the absolute best people in the world. Something that's someone that's the best at something. Let's take, for example, Olympics. Someone's that training for Olympics and he's become the best in the entire world at something else. Or at something specific, sorry. So what else does he have in his life that's taking his time? What else is he focusing on? So if he's already training, let's say, 8 to 10 hours, even more, every single day, what else does he have? Does he have a lot of friends? Well, maybe he doesn't have a lot of time for a lot of friends. Maybe he has only a few close friends. Does he have a big social life? Well, he can't have a big social life and go drinking every, every weekend or anything because he needs to train. He needs to keep his body in shape. He's on a, probably on a very strict diet as well. So he's giving up so many delicious foods and delicious stuff to keep his body in shape. So... Think about what else does he have. He, he barely has anything else in his life, but he is the best in the world at one particular thing. So that is what you want to do at the end of the day. You want to actually become the best at something. But to, to become the best at something, you need to give up everything else. So let's, you know, I know a lot of people are not very into sports and don't really understand the sports metaphor. So let's go into something called into business and someone we always go to and everybody knows is doctors okay so let us take an example of doctors now everybody knows what a gp is a general practitioner that's the guy you go to when you're sick your nose is running you have a cough or so you're something wrong and you do not know what's wrong with you you go to that doctor it's a gp so he has to work with a very very wide variety of patients so that means his knowledge base needs to be extremely wide and he needs to do everything well so basically if someone comes in with a cough he needs to know what's going on if something comes on runny nose he needs to go on if someone has a pain in their leg he needs to go know what's going on so he has so many things that he needs to be well at to do his job and then on top of that, he has a lot of different patients. So even unruly patients, guys that just comes in and just says, 
I know I have this, I want this medicine. It's like, okay, sorry, sir, it doesn't work like this. We st still need to diagnose you. He's like, no, I've done this 20 times. I know exactly what medicine I want. Just give me the, sus the subscription. It's like, no, it's not how that works. So constantly working with very difficult patients as well. And worked extremely long hours because, you know, everybody works extremely long hours, but it's no different for a GP. So and then, let just see. Now we go on to the orthopedic surgeon. So that's a specialist. That's someone that specializes in only one thing. Let's say you can take any, any specialist, but we, we're going to talk about this orthopedic surgeon because let's say, example, he only specializes in knees, right? So now what happens is he needs to sacrifice everything, all that wide knowledge that the GP has. He needs to condense down and he only needs to focus on one specific part, the knees. So now he knows absolutely everything about the knees. Yes, and he's a specialist at the knees, but all that other knowledge he doesn't know, doesn't need to know in such great detail, such as a GP. So now, well, obviously spending some more time and studying more and becoming a specialist and starting to do that on a daily basis, now he can pick and choose his clients because he's the specialist. They don't have so many choices. They need to either go to him or the other specialist. So he, if he has unruly clients, great, just go somewhere else. Or you can just pick and choose. Like, okay, this is a difficult operation. This is an easy operation. Or, okay, great, this guy needs an operation, needs to do this. He can pick and choose his clients. That's very, very nice to have. Then, above that, he gets paid five times more than a GP. On average, I'm telling you, there's... A, there's so many specialists that charge like five times more. And that's not even including the surgeries. Like in a surgery itself, that guy can make like two, 30 to 40,000 rand, one surgery, one half an hour. Can you do that? Can you just spend a, a work half an hour and get paid like 30,000 rand? Like that's something that's not very common in the business world because the guy's a specialist. So then... Because he only focuses on one thing specifically the whole time, he gets so good at it, it becomes easy for him. So for someone else to do a knee surgery, it would be incredibly hard. But for him, doing that every second day, doing surgeries, it becomes so routine, so into his being that it becomes easy. So now he becomes, he actually enjoys his work because it's so easy to do and he just constantly does it. So... That's what happens is you start to enjoy your work. You start to do everything with passion because it's so easy and you get so much more respect than a GP. You get so much more money than a GP. So that's the big difference between someone that's a general, general practitioner and someone that's a specialist or an expert at something. So that's what you want at the end of the day. You want that so which would you choose do you want to be a gp do you want to be the guys working himself to death has ter has very difficult patients works long hours as the work itself is very difficult or do you want to be the guys really loving his job getting paid more you know has a lot more respect has a lot more fun see that's what we want at the end of the day and you want to you want to start focusing all your energy into one thing. So you're thinking, yeah, but I can't become a specialist. Or no, that Olympic champion, he works 10 hours a day on only, on only training. I can't imagine doing 10 hours of just focusing on one thing. I'm going to ask you, how long do you work every day? Well, probably at least eight hours. So why not use that time that you're already spending on your business or in your in your life and focus that on one particular thing. If you can actually focus all that energy, you'll make so much more progress in one thing. But the problem is that you are not a specialist, but you already spend eight to 10 hours a day in your practice is you spend a little time on something here, little time on something there, little time on something here. And eventually it just starts up of you making this little progress here, and this little progress there. And if you just condense all that down and focus on one thing, you can take all the progress you would have done in all that different directions and it would go into one thing. And you have so much progress in one thing and that's what you need to be doing. You need to start focusing all your energy into one thing. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Become a specialist. So it is as easy as just finding a group of people 
with a specific painful problem and become an expert in solving that problem. That's all it is. For you to become a specialist, you just need to focus on one particular thing and just sacrifice everything else. So that's what it is. So thank you, everybody. Tune in next week, 12 p.m. again, Monday. We do another one of these live videos. And please give us some questions or comments and give us some feedback on the videos. We always like that. So thank you, everybody, and enjoy your week.